In this video, we're going to explore the nuclear model of the atom. Over many, many centuries, early scientists had very limited ability to explore the atom, and they made predictions based on the limited knowledge that they had. And so success, successively, over time, scientists were able to come up with the model of the atom that we know now. So oh, an atom is the smallest particle that still retains the properties of an element. So if you broke it down further, it would no longer be that element. You would actually, if you broke apart the nucleus, you would create two new nuclei and with very different properties. And atoms are very tiny and they're mostly empty space. So we'll take a little look at that um, in our next point, but the nucleus is very small. Contrary to Thomson's theory that the atom was mostly a positive sphere um, with electrons, negative portions embedded throughout, um, we now know that that nucleus is actually a very tiny, tiny positive sphere in the very center of the atom. So as I said, atoms have a tiny nucleus with with nucleons within, and those nucleons are two different things, so either protons or neutrons are right here. This illustration that was presented by Cognity um, shows that if you had a football field, the very tiny dot right here in the middle, the size of a marble, would be the nucleus. So the rest of it would be empty space and the electrons um, surrounding the nucleus. Electrons are found in energy levels around the nucleus, so they're not just anywhere, they're actually in distinct energy levels. Um, Bohr referred to these as orbitals or orbits, so like, like the planetary or the solar system model of the atom, where we have a positive nucleus in the middle, and then surrounded by these electron planets orbiting. So we call them energy levels now. They have distinct energy in each of these rings or orbits. There are three subatomic particles. Two of them are found in the nucleus and the third one is found um, surrounding the nucleus. So the first one, protons, its relative charge is, a, is plus one. So um, every proton has a positive charge with a factor of one. Its relative mass is also one in comparison to neutrons and electrons, so when you compare them that way, and you find them in the nucleus. Neutrons have a relative charge of no, zero, no charge, they're uncharged, um, but they still have a relative mass of one. So it's the protons and the neutrons that contribute to the mass of the atom itself, um, and it's also found in the nucleus. And finally, electrons, electrons have a relative charge of minus one, so each proton and each electron cancel each other's charge out. Its relative mass is one two thousandth of a proton or a neutron. So they are so tiny in mass that they we don't count them in the total mass of an atom because they are negligible. And we find electrons orbiting the nucleus. So there is a specific notation that we use to represent an atom or an ion. Uh, we represent ions this way as well. So it's called the AXZ formation. So the X is the atomic symbol. So in the examples that we're going to go through, we'll, we'll use um, the carbon and oxygen. We'll go through some examples. So C or O for whichever element it is. The mass number is A. It gets written at the top left. And then that represents the number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And then Z is at the bottom. It represents the number of protons in the atom, or the atomic number. So mass number is protons and neutrons. Atomic number is number of protons. So the first element we'll practice with is carbon. So first of all, carbon's notation would look like this. So the symbol is C. And if you look up on the periodic table, you will see that its mass number is 12 and its atomic number is 6. So that would be the notation. So 
Remember, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So the atomic number is six, so we have six protons. We also have six electrons because the number of protons and the number of electrons match in an atom. And then finally, the number of neutrons, you take the mass number and you subtract the atomic number and that gives you the number of protons that are left. So 12 subtract six equals six protons or six neutrons, sorry. Our next example that we're going to do is iron. Now, depending on the periodic table you look at, you may have a decimal place um, atomic mass. I'm going to round this one. Mine says 55.847. We're just going to write 56 for the atomic mass. And then our atomic number is 26. So the number of protons is 26. Matches the atomic number. And then the number of electrons is 26, which matches the atomic number. And then the number of neutrons is 30, so 56 minus 26, so that is iron. Our next example is fluorine, so fluorine's symbol is F. We look up on the periodic table for its mass number, so that is 19. And then its atomic number is 9, so the number of protons is 9, the number of electrons is 9, and the number of neutrons is 19 minus 9, so 10. So our next example is oxygen with a minus 2 charge. So that means that it has two extra electrons um, to give it that minus 2 charge. So its notation is going to be a little different. So we have oxygen and then 16 and 8 for the atomic number and atomic mass. So the number of protons is 8, but because there are two extra electrons to give it that negative charge, the number of electrons is 10, and then the number of neutrons is 8. Our next example is magnesium, so Mg, and it's in the alkaline earth metal column, so the second group. Um, we have a mass of 24, and an atomic number of 12, so the number of protons is 12, number of electrons is 12, and the number of neutrons is 24 minus 12, so 12. 